welcome to the Alley Cat Show. I'm Alley. And I'm Cat. Last week, the United States was rocked by the shooting of two black men in Louisiana and Minnesota. Then, a Black Lives Matter protest in Dallas turned deadly when a sniper shot 12 police officers. Five of them died. The Black Lives Matter protests continued, and in Minnesota, 21 officers were injured. But while the media focused on how black lives matter, they largely left out how police lives matter too. Yahoo News anchor Katie Couric asked a Black Lives Matter leader about the 200 protesters arrested over the weekend, but never mentioned the injured officers in Minnesota. In peaceful civil disobedience and peaceful protests, I've only seen violent police. Another Black Lives Matter activist on The Kelly File took the rhetoric even further. We need to abolish the police, period. And a former Miss Alabama winner said she wasn't surprised by what took place in Dallas. I wasn't surprised by what the shooter did to those cops. And I think a lot of us feel the same way. But let's take a look at who those Dallas police officers were. Brent Thompson was murdered just two weeks after marrying fellow officer Emily Thompson. He also left behind six children and one grandchild from a previous marriage. His family paid tribute to him at his memorial service. To the coward that tried to break me and my brothers and sisters, you know your hate made us stronger. One thing I would always say to my dad when he walked out the door was, Goodbye, Daddy. I love you. Be safe. And tonight we say our final goodbye, Daddy. We love you. Be safe. Brent oversaw police trainings in Iraq and Afghanistan and then spent seven years with the Dallas area rapid transit. This week, he would have celebrated his 44th birthday. 32-year-old Patrick Zimmeripa survived three tours in Iraq before serving in Dallas as a police officer. Besides his dedication to service and loyalty to the Rangers and Dallas Cowboys, Patrick loved his kids, his stepson Dylan, and his daughter Lincoln, who he called Princess. Where you going? Bye. After the shooting, a family member recalled how two-year-old Lincoln cried out for Dada when the family viewed his body through a window. Michael Kroll, a 40-year-old officer from Michigan, wanted to be a police officer since he was in high school. When the Dallas police force was hiring in 2007, he moved more than 1,100 miles to pursue that dream. Michael's mother said in a statement, he was a great caring person and wanted to help people, a wonderful son, brother, uncle, nephew, and friend. Sergeant Mike Smith was two years away from retirement. A former U.S. Army Ranger, Smith spent almost three decades with the Dallas Police Department. He left behind his wife, a Catholic grade school teacher, and two daughters. Here's what his nine-year-old, Caroline, remembered about the last time she saw her dad. And he said to me, what if this is the last time you ever kissed me or hugged me? Did he always say that? No. That was probably the first time he ever said that. Lauren Ahrens was described as being a gentle giant because at six feet five inches, he turned heads just by showing up his father-in-law said. Yet he was kind and loving to his wife and kids, 10-year-old Sorsha and 8-year-old Magnus. Lauren met his wife Katrina through the Dallas Police Department, where she's serving as a detective. At his memorial service, Lauren's pastor said, if you were in downtown Dallas on Thursday night and all hell broke loose and you were a part of a group that was marching and there was someone protecting your right to march, you'd want it to be Lauren because he would lay down his life. And he did. In other words, police officers aren't just walking badges and trigger-happy guns. They are human beings who put their lives on the line for Americans every day. In a world where breaking news is so immediately accessible, it's easy to reduce people to statistics. But to heal the vicious hatred and animosity that our country is facing right now, we have to resist the urge to just jump to conclusions or demonize entire groups of people. The way forward is through compassion and through critical thinking, and also through honesty and by remembering that when most people are fleeing danger, our brave and selfless law enforcement are the ones running straight into it. We'll leave you with this quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Please like and share this video so others can also hear about the brave stories of these Dallas officers. Tell us what you think in the comments below, and be sure to follow us on Twitter. See you next time.